I now give the floor to to His Excellency Miguel Vargas Maldonado, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of the Dominican Republic. Honourable Minister, you have the floor. Mr. President, Secretary General, Your Excellencies, uh, Heads of State and Government, Ministers, Distinguished Heads of Delegations, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's an honor to take part in this session of the General Assembly of the United Nations and address this illustrious audience representing His Excellency Danilo Medina, President of the, Repu of the Dominican Republic. Now, since the founding of this organization, 74 years ago already, our country has been deeply committed to its mission of cooperation for peace, security, and the development of nations. This year, that commitment has been further strengthened when for the very first time, even though we are, were one of the founding members of the United Nations, for the very first time we uh, uh, took on a non-permanent seat in the Security Council. This is, of course, a responsibility that we are greatly honored to uh, bear. This is why... Um, Starting from January we, we of this year, we have done uh, everything possible to make sure that our contribution to the Council uh, should always be the search for broad consensuses which facilitate uh, decision-making and efficiency. As part of this the work, at the beginning of this year, when we uh, assumed the presidency of the Council, we organized an open debate dedicated to the impact of natural climate disasters and their negative effects on international peace and security. That, that debate has taken on a, a renewed relevance in the current situation following the wave of uh, forest fires in the Amazon and the recent passage of Hurricane Dorian, which has uh, left a, a gut-wrenching uh, trail of destruction with material damage and victims. It should be noted that for us and our region of the Caribbean, the effects of climate change are real, they're visible, they're devastating, and they threaten the very existence of our countries. And bearing this in mind, uh, it gave us hope when Secretary General Antonio Guterres convened a, a climate action summit which uh, uh, has considered the same topic in the more greater framework of the 2030 agenda and we had the great honor of attending this climate action summit. Now we agree with the Secretary General that climate change is the defining topic of our times and it is a direct existential threat. Now by the same token, we have been especially involved in the regional agenda on issues such as humanitarian assistance uh, uh, to Venezuela or the preparation of a new support mission to Haiti. Ladies and gentlemen, we have little over a decade to make the sustainable development goals a reality. Uh, goals that were uh, established by this assembly, this very assembly. Uh, hence, it is the duty of each one of the countries to take stock of what has been achieved, to to uh, verify both the uh, progress achieved and the challenges that remain, and of course, uh, uh, define uh, 
those actions that are required to ensure success uh, in achieving each one of the targets. Now, I, I have to say that the SDG agenda, in the case of the Dominican Republic, was in immediately incorporated in our everyday policies because, in fact, it is geared towards the same goals as our other policies from the very first day, and that is to uh, put people's needs first. And so just as uh, defined in the SDGs, our uh, first uh, primary priority as a government uh, has always been to combat poverty and hunger, uh, something that we have always done from every possible angle. Now this includes implementing social policies, ensuring access to credit, and of course, promoting the development of our rural areas, which, as the FAO has explained in their latest reports, continue to uh, concentrate the highest levels of poverty uh, throughout our region. Now, this multidimensional strategy in which uh, uh, President Danilo Medina has been personally engaged uh, in depth uh, for example, by making surprise visits to those in need. This has made it possible for us to obtain uh, successful results. The uh, rate of extreme poverty in our country has fallen from 9.9% .9 in 2012 to 2.9% 2 in 2018, which is a significant achievement. Now, as far as general poverty, it uh, fell from 39.7% to 23% over this same period. Now, the greatest drop or reduction was recorded in the rural areas where po rural poverty uh, fell from 49.3% in 2012 to 25.6% in 2018. This was thanks to the constant support that the government has been uh, providing to our farmers. Furthermore, w the, the Dominican Republic is uh, uh, the country in Latin America which has managed to reduce hunger the most over the past decade. We are also one of only four countries where this trend has remained stable over the past two years. Now, that's a period which, w during which, unfortunately, many of our neighbors has have seen progress in this area slowed. We have also m taken great strides in terms of achieving the indicators of SDG 4, education, because an inclusive and quality education is a key goal of our policies. It's a goal that has uh, been uh, has led to the allocation of 4% of our GDP for education and has set in motion the most wide-ranging tr educational transformation that our country has experienced in its history. We have also uh, uh, achieved significant progress in other uh, important areas such as health care, preservation of water, gender equality, access to energy, and sustainable economic growth inter alia. Now, of course, uh, we have a lot of work uh, uh, still to do, and, and we know that there are no shortcuts to achieve these goals, which can only be achieved uh, through hard work and perseverance. Now, we, uh, we are optimistic, knowing that just a, uh, a year, a year uh, from the time the term of the current government ends, under the skillful uh, leadership of President Danilo Medila, Medina, we have managed to build partnerships with all sectors of our society, so that independent of the political future, this development agenda already can be said to belong to all citizens of our country, and it will continue uh, on its, cor its course on a firm footing. We trust that the Dominican Republic will continue uh, uh, moving forward in lockstep with uh, our brethren countries of the region to in tackling uh, such urgent and uh, uh, ambitious challenges as climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, as we mark the 30th anniversary of the Convention of the Rights of the Child, of which we are a signatory, it's important to uh, indicate that the Dominican Republic is fully committed to uh, 
fulfilling uh, the global obligation of ensuring that every child's rights are respected, a commitment that we have uh, renewed with uh, additional efforts. We are the first country of the region that, uh, after reaching a consensus within our society, drew up a national roadmap for the prevention and care of children who are victims of violence and teenagers also. And of course we will continue working in all spheres, uh, starting from inclusive education, uh, reducing uh, infant mortality, promoting uh, timely registration of births, and eradicating child labor. All this, of course, we will do ultimately with the goal of ensuring that all children and teenagers in the Dominican Republic uh, live a full life uh, s safely and happily. Mr. President, now thinking precisely of these children, these boys and girls and their future, we know that one of the priorities of the United Nations system, without a doubt, is to reduce inequalities. Now, to shorten, to shorten the distance and to bridge the gaps between the countries that are the most developed and those who are uh, struggling. However, it is important to note that uh, the uh, character of these gaps and divides uh, is changing, and the challenges that we confront to overcome them are also changing. When we speak of inclusion, we can no longer speak of... Uh, uh, simply meeting basic needs. In just a few years, the newly marginalized, the new, the new poor, perhaps will not be those, will no longer be those who don't have food, or, or, or and hopefully will be able to once and for all resolve that problem of of food and housing. However, it's quite possible that the newly excluded are those who don't have access to knowledge, to the internet, to new technologies, and therefore they will encounter increasingly more difficulties to enter the labor market. If we want to speak of inclusion, of uh, development and creating opportunities, we must also speak of decent work and decent wages. And uh, what we do know is that technological change, according to some studies, could lead to the disappearance of 50% of the, uh, of the jobs uh, in our current economies in the next 20 years. 50%. This could undo and reverse all the progress that the Dominican government has achieved. Already today, technologies are transforming the way that we, are re that we relate to the world and they're creating uh, huge differences between those countries who are who are most most uh, integrated in this new age and those who aren't i'll just give you an example while the most developed country in the developed countries 80% of the population has is connected to the internet in the least developed countries only 20% and so i ask you what possibility will these developing countries have to compete in the new economy of the fourth industrial revolution. And even in, in countries like the Dominican Republic, where internet coverage is much more than 20%, how will we manage to connect that share of the population that live in the most remote, in the remotest areas, who still live with the technologies of the first industrial revolution and, and uh, perhaps uh, uh, simply practices uh, subsistence agriculture. So, ladies and gentlemen, therefore the most urgent question that we need to ask ourselves today is whether this transformation, which is already underway, whether it will contribute to, to bridging the inclusion divide or, to the contrary, will further... Uh, widen the distance between the rich and the poor. And what is certain is that up to now, I, we can say that prospects uh, for the future are far from encouraging. Most of the experts uh, appear to agree that at least uh, based on current conditions, the technological revolution will not contribute to reducing inequality. Now, 
beyond the fact that the technological revolution could lead to the creation or the disappearance of jobs, what can be predicted in current conditions is that the divide between those who are trained to uh, fill the jobs of the future and those who aren't trained will only grow. This is why we like to make an urgent appeal to this assembly to steer us away from the path of inequality that the model of technological development is currently uh, uh, taking. To uh, achieve that, it's it's very important to have such initiatives as the United Nations High-Level Panel on Digital Cooperation, which will help us in finding solutions to the problem of digital security, equality, and enforcing rights in cyberspace. Also important are, is the work being done by the UNDP as it seeks to reduce inequalities and promote the progress and well-being of humankind through new technologies. And of course, all this links up to the uh, idea that we will need to work together to increase investment in research and development. If we want to uh, advance toward the next stage of economic growth. This is an area where, unfortunately, our countries are lagging. Uh, in the list of the 10 most innovative uh, countries in the world, uh, led by South Korea, Germany, and Finland, there is not a single Latin American country. We believe that it is urgent and a priority to implement in an effective and ongoing way instruments such as an exchange of knowledge, capacity development, access to technology, and cooperation in science and innovation. And on this point, the government of the Dominican Republic would like to take this opportunity, this forum, to uh, request those countries that are leaders in this transformation of knowledge and capacities to assist us in this process. Ladies and gentlemen, the experience of the Dominican government has been, uh, is that it's just as important to find responses to uh, current problems just, uh, just as it is to be able to anticipate future needs. As leaders, it is our responsibility to constantly uh, take action in both of these dimensions. A short-term vision must take into account the impacts that our decisions and actions might have on future generations. And a long-term vision must also consider those people who have not even managed to meet their basic needs. This is why today it's more urgent than ever to focus on the present without losing sight of the future. Because only if we strike this difficult balance will we be bringing together the diverse components of our societies, bridging gaps and uh, healing wounds. Only in this way we'll be building a future that is more just, prosperous, and sustainable for all. The Dominican Republic would invite you to explore new forms of cooperation and to m uh, make progress on the very urgent agenda of the present and the much needed agenda of the future. We have no time to lose. The time is now, the, this very hour, only with commitment, with determination, and well, keeping our eyes on the interests of our peoples will we uh, victoriously tackle the various challenges that represent a major test for developing countries. You can always count on the Dominican Republic to work actively in favor of the well-being of both present and future generations. Thank you very much. I thank the Foreign Minister of the Dominican Republic for his statement.